Hello everybody, I am going to be creating this project for you today. It is a pretty simple project with just some fabric and some sticks, some gesso and some color. Uh, before I get into the video, I hope you guys uh, hit that subscribe button if you're new to my channel. Uh, give this video a thumbs up and you can always share it on social media if you would like. Also, all of the supplies are listed in the description box down below, so be sure to check it out if you have any questions on any of the supplies that I'm using. Be sure to leave a comment in the um, comment section. If you are watching this uh, live with me, you can ask any questions you like, and I will be definitely taking advantage of the Premiere feature um, in the future. <laughs> uh, I think it is going to be a lot of fun. So I started out with a wood canvas. These are from Prima. They're from an older collection from the Relics and Artifacts, but they don't make them anymore. So you can use any type of canvas or uh, you can even use chipboard if you like, any type of box. You can make this project on anything. You can even use the techniques I'm using to alter a bottle or any sort of thing like that. All right, so I am just going to be gluing the uh, cheesecloth around the box. This is going to give nice texture in the background. And for this type of project, layering and adding different types of textures is key to the end result because we're going to be gessoing the whole thing and adding lots of color and then adding some lighter color with some darker color to give the project a lot of depth and dimension so you want to have a lot of different textures uh, layered on top of each other. Alright so with that the cheesecloth on the wood piece I'm going to add some gesso and I don't add so much that it covers it completely. I'm just wanting to add a little kind of like a light layer of the gesso on top of the uh, cheesecloth that way when I add the color later, I can get a variation with the color. I talk about this a lot where I add just a little bit of gesso to some um, embellishments or fabric, uh, things like that. That way, later on when I add color, it will give sort of darker in some areas, lighter in some areas. It will seep in to the fabric in some areas, kind of sit on top of some other areas. So it's really nice um, to do that. All right, so this is actually a shawl that I had. Um, I found it when we were moving, and I used to do, uh, I used to take pictures of newborns, and I used this as a prop to kind of wrap them in, kind of more like a delicate look. And so I decided that I'm not doing that anymore, so I'm going to use it on uh, my mixed media projects. So I really like how it looks and the texture on it is really really cool. Alright so I'm just going to continue to put this on the wood piece and cut off all of the excess. I don't want too much and then I can always use these little pieces uh, here and there in different projects in the future. But I'm making sure that it's all down and adhered nicely. So I am going to add some gesso and you could definitely add all of your layers and then add gesso. I find that uh, adding it in between each layer is uh, creates the best look in my opinion. Uh, you could do it however you uh, feel comfortable doing or however you like to do it. But I'm not going to... Um, add gesso really heavily to this because then I'll lose a lot of that texture. I did add a little bit of water to kind of help spread it out a little bit because this is heavy gesso and I don't want it to be too thick on there. So I just want enough to where it um, uh, coats a little bit of the, the fabric. All right, hopefully I can get my train of thought going as I finish up my coffee here. I am really glad that I am creating again. I was really worried that I wasn't going to be um, creating for a long time, but I decided to do some live videos uh, this past week and it really got my creative juices going and uh, just wanting, wanting me to create again. So 
All right, so these are some sticks. I think I got these at Hobby Lobby. Of course, you can go probably in your backyard and find some sticks. You definitely don't have to get them in a store. But uh, I live in the desert. We don't really have that many trees here, so it's a little bit harder for me to <laughs> find uh, sticks like this. But anyway, so I'm just kind of staggering them um, on the sort of in the center of the, the square here. And I'm not worried if they're perfectly straight or anything like that. As you can see, some of them are curved and it's a little bit crooked. I like, you know, the wonkiness of this project. So I added a little bit of water to the sticks because again, I don't want the gesso to be too heavily on the sticks. I want some of that texture and uh, that way with the water, it just kind of sits a little bit on top. All right, and then I'm gonna dry it and then I'm gonna add a little bit more uh, gesso on top of that. So again, adding the water just kind of thins it out and you don't get too thick of gesso. I am using heavy gesso again, so if you have a thinner gesso, you definitely don't have to add water. Well, you can if you want it, uh, you know, even thinner, but um, you definitely don't have to. All right, so as you can see, I am using my heat tool as I am putting the gesso on. This helps it get tacky and adhere a little bit better to whatever surface I am painting. So I have, uh, the other day in the live video, I created a bunch of uh, clay molds. This is one of them on the bottom. And then I have a metal clock piece from Finnebear and then just some little random metal pieces from Finnebear. And then this star, it's like a plastic star. I don't, I've had these forever. I don't even remember where I got them, but I think I got them for some sort of project in the past, but I don't remember. <laughs> Anyways, you can use any type of focal point that you want on your project and just kind of cover it up with some gesso. And as you could see, I was going to add this wood uh, love, or not wood, it's a chipboard uh, word, Ugh, I cannot think today, uh, but then I decided to add a sticker instead. All right, so I am going to continue to do the um, heating while adding the gesso. Uh, this way it gets really tacky and adheres a little bit better to the surfaces that I am painting. And as you could see, all of my embellishments are moving around because I just glued them on and I am very impatient, so I wanna get it done. And so, yeah, anyways, I love doing projects like this because you can use anything that you would like uh, to add texture and um, interest. And there's just so many different options you can use to create a project like this. Um, and the end result is just always great, I think, because you can use so many different things and then each time, depending on what you use, it turns out different. All right, so I wanted a little bit of cracks on this project and on the wood, um, the little sticks. So I'm adding some white crackle paste and I'm using a paintbrush this time because I wanna get in some of the little um, crevices and just little areas. So normally I like to use a silicone uh, like a palette knife that Finnebear makes. Uh, that way it gets a little bit thicker on there. And I think that when you use a paintbrush with the crackle paste, it kind of messes with the chemical reaction. I don't know how this stuff works, but it doesn't give as, as um, good of cracks in the end, in my opinion, um, because you're having the brush strokes in with the... Um, the crackle paste so it just doesn't end up um, being as nice all right so I let that dry on its own uh, and I did get some really cool cracks on the wood pieces or I keep calling them wood pieces little sticks I mean it is wood but anyways all right so the color I used first was from Lindy stamp gang it's uh, the flat Fabio in pop rock purple and that way I could just get a nice um, light base color of purple and then I'm going in with the Jazzy Jive in purple. This is a really nice deep purple 
This is going to create lots of depth for the project. I do end up using a little bit darker color. Well, a lot darker. I believe it is the Prima uh, Precious Stone color. It's almost black. It's really dark. So just in a little bit of areas because I definitely wanted it to have more dimension in the end. And now I'm going in with the lighter purple again because I wanted it to be sort of like an ombre effect, so darker in the center and lighter on the um, edges there. And that color again is Pop Rock Purple. And I don't think it's called, the, the company is called Lindy's Stamp Gang anymore. I think it's just called Lindy's Gang Spray. Uh, a lot of these sprays are very old. I And they were in my closet for a very long time because uh, when I was on the Prima design team, I wasn't able to use any other uh, medium like spray and paints and all that other than Prima. So, uh, but they still work perfectly fine. But if you're searching for the company, I believe it's just Lindy's Gang Sprays. I don't think it's Lindy's Stamp Gang anymore. All right, anyway, so you saw me adding that darker color and I'm going in now with a paintbrush because I really wanted some of the areas to be... Um, really dark that way it gives a lot of depth and dimension especially around all of these sticks and underneath the embellishments and then it kind of just seeps down into all of the fabric that I added again I added the uh, cheesecloth and then the sort of like lace lacing material and I will end up blending this out it is kind of looking like a hot mess at the moment but I will end up blending it out and um, adding some white gesso on top and you know all right so I am going to dry it a little bit first and then I will add a little bit more of the darker purple and then the lighter purple as you can see here I'm adding the darker purple and again that one is the jazzy jiven purple and then I add it just right where I put that black color. I know it's a little crazy, but it I promise you it it's worth it in the end. <laughs> every step, every layer, every texture, everything is worth it in the end. And I want to make sure that I get the edges. Uh, I tend to forget about the edges sometimes, so I'm trying not to forget. And I go in with the lighter purple. And then I let that dry and I dried it with my heat tool as well. And then now I'm going in with the white gesso and again using that same technique where I use my heat tool as I'm adding the gesso uh, to the texture. And this is going to highlight a lot of the um, really cool texture in the fabric and the um, sticks as well. So I really wanted it to be, like I said before, like an ombre effect. So I'm adding a ton of white to the bottom and the top of the project and then I kind of go in lighter um, to the center because I really wanted it to be um, like that ombre effect like I said before. All right as you could see I am going to continue to do that and then now I'm going the top or the bottom it is the same so uh, anyways I love how this looks it does take some time because of all the sprays you add and all the gesso you use, but it's definitely a fun, easy project. It's so easy. All you need is just different items to add texture to your project and then some gesso and then some sprays. You don't have to use sprays. You can use actually uh, acrylic paint. You can use watercolors. You can use all sorts of different things to add color to your projects. All right, now I'm going in on top of the sticks, just adding that highlight there, just to kind of highlight a lot of the area. And it did, the color did seep in a little bit, so it kind of evened out. Um, a lot of the white is really, really white, but I knew that in the end, after it dried, it was going to uh, kind of blend a little bit better all together. All right, so I let that dry a little bit and then I'm going in with one last thin-ish layer of gesso and then I'm just gonna give you a little peek at all of the texture. I love how it turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That is going to be it for today. Please hit that subscribe button if you are new to my channel 
and give this video a thumbs up. You can always share it on social media if you would like and leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or if you just want to say hello. And also all of these supplies are listed in the description box down below. I want to thank you guys so much again for watching and I will catch you guys later. Bye.